Serious science. Chemistry and biology of Elmo's. It's finally time to leave all what's past behind me. I've made up my mind. Look, you already know water is the key to all life on this planet. And if it gets polluted, it affects the living things on it, in it, and drinking it, including you and me. Here's the deal. Scientists know that this clean looking water here is about to become a serious water quality issue. Now it won't happen overnight, but it will happen. Because this place has a documented history of what happens as a result of what's about to happen up that river. So join us on a series of water conservation investigations, searching for sources and solutions to pollution as we head into the outdoors. Critical questions. What is algae? What causes toxic blooms? What blooms So what's your first step in an environmental investigation? Build yourself a foundation of knowledge. And a great place to start is with the history. And what better way to get the history than with a local who knows what's going on? Since I've moved into this area, I've seen it get progressively worse. Uh, the blue-green algae has gotten to a point where I can't use the water at all for a, about two months of the summer. Uh, the DNR will give us data that says it's actually impaired 92 out of the 100 recreational days in the summer. There's times when the blue-green algae is toxic. We had hives. Uh, people that I've talked to have lupus conditions and other medical impacts. Uh, you know that you can't use the water and you hope that nobody will go in it either. The entire water surface is matted with blue and you don't even want to stand there because the smell is so bad. The stench is unbearable. There's a certain kind of algae called blue-green algae and it produces uh, cyanobacteria. And cyanobacteria is a, is a toxin. Uh, it's a poison and that is the problem is that we now have huge bodies of water in our state that are full of a toxin that's detrimental to all the animals that uh, uh, live around the lake, including us. So the river we just came down is one of the sources? It is the major source of nutrients to Tainer Lake. The other tributary that comes in from the northwest is the Hay River. We have a rainfall event and that rainfall event falls at such a rate that it exceeds the soil or the land's capacity to absorb the water and it's no longer absorbing it, it will run downhill. And then it gets concentrated in small channels to bigger channels and eventually delivered to the Red Cedar River, which enters right behind us here into this delta area on Tainer Lake. And associated with that is the main concern we have is the pollutant phosphorus. Phosphorus, phosphorus. Which stimulates the summer algal blooms on this lake. After World War II, what happened, we started developing inorganic fertilizers to produce our corn crops and alfalfa on farms. And the other thing we did at that time is we started feeding our dairy cattle in Wisconsin a mineral supplement that was very high in phosphorus. Well, part of that mineral goes through that cow. It doesn't all stay in her bones. And so those and our communities had to get rid of their waste, right? So all the communities upstream of Tainer Lake have a sewage treatment plant that discharges sewage treatment plant effluent to the Red Cedar system. What we have to find a way is how do we still produce those foods, that milk, that meat, those commodities we need that fills the grocery store up and still doesn't pollute the water. And we have some very promising opportunities, especially in the Red Cedar Basin right now. We have some farmers taking extremely proactive solutions to that problem. And it's Pretty simple if you think about it. We only have two ways to manage non-point source pollution. We can either control the source of phosphorus, the amount placed on the land, 
or the ability of that land to generate runoff. That's the transport mechanism is the land and the runoff associated with it. So farmers are really working very well on both of those fronts. They're only putting, starting to put on what they actually need to produce the food we need. And then we're doing many things out there on the landscape to slow that water down to get more of it to infiltrate so we have less runoff, less potential for phosphorus to be delivered to Tainer Lake. Those sound like some serious solutions to pollution. And they're very proactive solutions to non-point source pollution, which is the major problem we have to deal with here. We also have farmers teaching one another about how to grow their commodities, farm their land, and produce clean water in the runoff. It's called our Wisconsin Farmer-Led Project. We're finally starting to get to people to come together and understand how they as individuals impact water quality.